Hello, this is the video lesson for lesson 12.4 in AAA and AATH. We are dealing with properties of logarithms today. There's a warm-up problem at the top of your notes. If you'd be so kind as to pause the recording, I'd like for you to try that by yourself and then um, take a look at what I've written. Okay, so just pause the recording for a minute. Okay, so let's look at this problem together. Hopefully you've written down a few things. You have x times y um, was the question, and so you replace that with a to the b and a to the c. And then you need to think about the fact that you have the same base here, and you're multiplying. And when that is the case, you add exponents. And so this hints at our lesson for today, um, which is utilizing this idea that when you have multiplication, same base, you add. Well, we know that logarithms are actually exponents, and so this hints at the first property of several that we will learn today, which is this one, that when you have a log and multiplication, you can split that apart into adding separate logs, just like you would add those separate exponents, okay? It's the same exact idea, just different notation. So the first example here says to express the following as a sum of logarithms. We will apply this rule in a very straightforward way. The 4 and the x are like the u and the v up above. So this is the base 3 log of 4 plus the base 3 log of x. Okay. The next one gives us the directions express as a single logarithm. Well, right now it's not a single logarithm because we actually have two logs. And so this is now trying to um, have you match up this idea with the right hand side of the property up above. Okay, so we're looking back up at that box and we're noticing this is where the addition sign is and so we're going to apply the property from above. And that's the base 2 log of, and now I'm going to have this is like my u and this is like my v. So it's 5 times 9 times x or the base 2 log of 45x. Okay. If you're okay with that, um, you should go on to the next little part. If not, um, watch that segment again, okay? The next property is about division. And so this comes from the idea that when you are doing things with exponents, like say you had x to the 12th over x to the 4th, you are simplifying that. You'd get x to the 8th. So when we have the same base like that x, and we're dealing with exponents, we end up subtracting um, as our way to simplify. And since logs are exponents, they work the same way. So when I have division, I am going to use subtraction. So the first example under this one says, explain, uh, excuse me, express the following as a difference. Difference means subtraction. So I'm lining this part up with the left side of that rule there. And I have the base c log of 1 minus the base c log of 4. Now, you actually could write this a little bit more compactly um, if you so chose because any um, time you're taking the log of the number 1, that actually is equal to 0. And so it's kind of nice to add that. It did say to write it as a difference, though, so I don't know that the simplification would be strictly necessary to follow the letter of the um, directions there. The third property um, comes from the power to a power rule in um, algebra. So when you have x squared to the third, that's x to the sixth, right? So here in this statement, we have two places that exponents are expressed. One is this log and one is this power n. Both of those are exponents. And so our rule says that when we have exponents in, you know, kind of two places, an exponent with another exponent, we multiply those together, and that's what is suggested right here. We are going to multiply this kind of exponent and this kind of exponent. Now, I've kind of, you know, made up a short little story or whatever. I don't know if it's a story so much, but um, a little thing that I say about this property, and I say that's the down in front property. You can take an exponent here and put it down in front, right? And so that's what you say when people are, like, blocking your view of something. You say, get down in front. This is the down in front property, okay? So here we have um, sort of a weird typo, I think, here actually with a, with a smart board, but I know it's neat on your page. So this is um, A here, statement A, and this is statement B over here. I guess I just messed that up a bit. Um, so statement A says find the base 3 log of 3 to the 10th. Actually, it says express as a product, okay? So we'll do the down in front rule here, which says I can put that 10 down in front and multiply it 
by the rest of this statement. And if you've been paying good attention in class, then you know what the base 3 log of 3 is. What exponent goes on a 3 to make a 3? Uh, 1. So you could write this as 10. Although that doesn't exactly, now I've kind of hidden the fact that it's written as a product. So I think this first line actually does what the directions say, but it would please your teachers if you knew this as well. Okay? All right, this guy, let's rewrite it first so it looks like we have an exponent. That radical is a square root, which could be written as the one-half power. And now we can say, hey, that one-half, you get down in front. And now that is, in fact, written as a product. Okay? There's a problem that I'm going to try that isn't on your page that I'm going to do as an example, and then the one on your page I'd like you to try. Um, by yourself in just a second, okay? But first, let's do this one kind of together, okay? So the directions here say express in terms of logarithms of x, y, and z. So we want log of x, log of y, log of z. We want those things to be in our final statement. And since these are all going to be base 2, I'll even remind myself of that, okay? Because it's a base 2 log in the question. Um, these are sometimes referred to as expansion problems. We're trying to spread out this expression to be long and simple. Each chunk is simple. So I would start out by rewriting that cube root as an exponent. And then I would use my famous down in front property and have that one third come down in front. I'm going to put brackets here, and you'll see why in just a little while, I hope. Then we got y to the fourth. OK. Then. In my next step, I'm going to have one-third. And now I'm going to use some of those properties that we mentioned earlier. This division, hmm, how could I rewrite that? Subtraction. And each time I'm applying a property, I get another log. Okay, so I hope you see now why I needed those brackets. It's to remind myself that that one-third goes with everything. And now I'm going to... Um, use that multiplication property and a little bit of down in front again. Okay, so I've got that one-third. Here, this is 5 times x squared. So I'd have the base 2 log of 5 plus the base 2 log of x squared minus, and I'm going to bring that 4 down in front, the base 2 log of y. And the last thing that I would do is actually dealing with that little 2 right there, that little pesky 2. So I would just bring that guy down in front as well. So the base 2 log of 5 plus the base 2 log, or excuse me, plus 2 times the base 2 log of x minus 4 times the base 2 log of y. Okay, now did I do what the directions asked me to do? They said to only have log of x, log of y, or log of z. And I, those are the only logs that I have that involve variables. This guy, this guy. I didn't end up having a log of z because there wasn't a z in my statement. Okay? So here's the example that I just worked. Kind of ran out of space there. Okay? But I'd like you to try this other one. Okay? And I'd like you to pause the recording and then come back when you're done. Okay? Okay. So I'd like you to check your answer to B. Especially pay attention to the highlighted yellow um, subtraction sign. You might have a plus there. That wouldn't be a very uncommon student mistake. It is a mistake. Um, this part is going to give you log of x plus log of y, but notice you have a subtraction sign in front of that. So that subtraction distributes through and gives you a subtraction sign right there. Okay? Let's go on to the next example. Okay? Um, this back side of your notes has a lot of problems, and so what I'm going to do is alternate between um, talking to you and then having you pause and try problems on your own. Okay, so we're going to do this big one kind of together and then there will be a lot of problems I have you work on your own. This one here says to write it as a single log logarithm. So it's the reverse of what we were just doing. Here is where we want to um, kind of make things more compact. Okay, so I'm using the reverse of the down in front and now I'm going to remember that all of those exponents that are fractions are actually radicals. So this is the square root of 9 right here. So this is the base a log of 3 plus the base a log of 25 minus the base a log of 5, because that's the cube root of 125. And then we just need to put everything together here. 3 times 25, and I'm multiplying because of this addition sign, 
is 75. So this is what I'm thinking in my head. And then the subtraction means I'm going to divide. So I just need to know 75 divided by 5, and I'm all set. Okay, so let's go on to our next example. All right, so here are some problems where you are given some information that you don't know the base of the log, but you know a couple of the values associated with that base. And so we are going to just run through one of these, and it says the base x log of 40, and I know that 40 is 5 times 8. So here I could say, well, this is the base x log of 5 plus the base x log of 8, and I'm just going to add those two decimals together from up above in the given, and that will give me my answer. Okay, I'd like you to try the next three on your own. Pause the video, please. Okay, please go ahead and check your answers for B, C, and D. You can see my work there. The general idea is to always get to the given numbers, log of 5 and log of 8 are given, so you need to rewrite everything in terms of those. Okay, in the next part, you're given a few pieces of information. You're told that the base 10 log of 2 is going to be called A, the base 10 log of 3 is going to be called B, and this I hope you know. What is the base 10 log of 10? Yeah, that's 1. Okay, so we can do these next problems by connecting everything back to either log of 2, uh, connecting everything to a 2, a 3, or a 10. So for instance, this first guy, if we use down in front, and then this property, the subtraction one, we know that this is really 2, and then log of 2 is something we're calling A, and log of 3 we're calling B. So we could say that this is just 2A minus 2B. Okay, so that's just an example. It's just practicing the manipulation of the logs. Okay, so I'd like you to try these, pause the video, and come back to get your answers. Okay, here are your answers for the next two questions. Um, there might be a little variation depending on how you chose to rewrite, say, 18. I did 3 squared times 2. You might have done 3 times 3 times 2. But our answers at the end should certainly be equivalent. So here is your answer for part B. And here is your answer for part C, okay? Take some time and look at that if you need to, but if not, let's move on. Uh, here are a few more examples that I'd like you to try. If you have already done these, great. And if you haven't, pl pause the video now, and then you can check your answers in a minute. Okay, here are your answers for the next three. You can see I have 1 half plus 1 half A, A plus B plus 1, and 2A minus 3B. So feel free to take... Stay on this screen for a little while if you need to check your work. Just pause the video, and if not, let's move on to the ending. The ending, we have four true and false statements. These are things that we have seen as mistakes on student papers. So we want you to take a minute and decide if you agree or disagree with each one. Pause the video and check your answers after that. Okay, you can see we have two true statements and two false statements. Let's talk about why the ones that are false are false. On um, statement B, I took the part on the left-hand side, and I've rewritten it out here um, in green pen. And we would use the down in front property here, so the one-half would come down in front, and then we'd have log of AB. And that property lets us rewrite this with two separate logs and addition. Now, what is the difference between that and what's written here? I hope you can tell that it's the brackets. That one half goes with both of these. So if we inserted the brackets here, then this would co totally be true. Unfortunately, there were not brackets there, so it is a false statement, okay? The other one, I'll take this guy over right over to here, and let's take a look at him, okay? So we've got the log of 45 to the one half power, okay? So the 45 is being taken to the one half, so the one half can come down in front. And that's what we've got, okay? Now, I would like you to just check this using your calculator. You could take 1 half log 45, and we're going to compare that with um, square root of log of 45. These are two unequivalent things. I am out of time, though, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave that for you to check on your own. And thanks for listening to your lesson. Bring your notes to class tomorrow, and um, remember to bring your book. We'll have a great problem session. Thanks.